in Lesson 9, we'll learn how to perform calculations in Excel. We'll learn how formulas work, and we'll learn about the basic math operators. As we've seen in our previous lessons, Microsoft Excel is great for storing data. But what if you want to perform some calculations on that data? Being able to store all of this sales data is handy, but I want more. I want to be able to calculate a total for each month and for each sales rep. But before we learn how to do that, let's see how basic math operations work in Excel. Let's come down here and click on Sheet 2 to move to a blank worksheet in the same book. This will give us a blank sheet to do some experimenting on. Let's type in a couple numbers. In cell A1, I'll put the number 10, enter. And in cell A2, I'll put the number 5, enter. Now my goal is to add these two numbers together. Now in Excel, math formulas work backwards from traditional math. For example, in a normal math problem, you might see x plus y equals z. Well, in Excel, I want you to think backwards. Think z equals x plus y. Now, instead of x and y, we're going to substitute in the cells that we want to add. So in this case, z equals a1 plus a2, if you want to add those two cells together. And now all you do in Excel is just get rid of the Z. Equals A1 plus A2 is what you put into a cell. The Z is the current cell that you're in. You're going to set Z's value, or the current cell's value, equal to A1 plus A2. And it's very important in Excel to make sure that you start each formula off with an equal sign. You have to use the equal sign to indicate that you're starting a formula. Now let's go back to our spreadsheet. And just so you can see a little better, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit using the zoom tool here. Zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Now in cell A3, I want to put the result of adding A1 plus A2. So to begin a formula, I start with the equal sign. Then you type in the two cells you want to add. So A1 plus A2, and then press Enter. And there's my result, 15. 15 is equal to 10 plus 5. And again, I just want to take a second to stress, don't forget the equal sign. Whenever I teach the Excel Basics class in the classroom, 90% of the time, when a student doesn't get their formula right, it's because they forgot the equal sign. If you don't type the equal sign in, it's not going to work right. Now, one of the nice things about Excel is that Excel will automatically recalculate all of your formulas if the data changes. For example, if later on A1 changes to 12, notice how my calculation down here updated itself because A3 is equal to A1 plus A2, and you can see that up here in the formula bar. Whatever A1 plus A2 happens to be at any given moment will show up in A3. When it comes to working with formulas, the cell will always show the result of the formula, but the formula bar will show you what's actually in the cell, the formula itself. Now, if you want to change the formula, you can use any of the techniques that I showed you earlier. You can double click on the cell, or you can click up here in the formula bar, or you can press F2. I'm going to click here in the formula bar. Now notice, A1 and A2 are different colors. And you can see little colored boxes around the cells down here. That's just Excel's way of letting you see visually what cells or ranges of cells you're working with. A1 plus A2 show up in color. We'll see how to work more with these colored boxes in a future lesson. But let's say I want to change this formula. Let's say instead of addition, I want subtraction. So I'll click right here after the plus. I'll press the backspace key and then put a minus sign in there. 
Now I have equals A1 minus A2, and then I'll press Enter. And now you can see the formula has changed from addition to subtraction. Here are all of Excel's basic math operators. We have addition, the plus sign. Subtraction is the minus sign. Division is the forward slash. Multiplication is the asterisk, the little star. On most keyboards, it's shift eight. And then exponentiation is raising a number to a power, like three to the fourth power would be three, and then that symbol called a caret, followed by a four. So again, if you want to change the formula, you can click here, click on the formula bar, or just double click on the cell. And now I'll change this to A1 times A2. That's multiplication. And there we go, there's a 60, 12 times 5. Now when working with formulas, you're not limited to just typing in cells. You can also type in constants or numbers. For example, I could say equals A3 divided by 10. That'll take the value in A3 and divide it by 10, which should give me a 6. There we go. That takes the value in cell A3 and divides it by 10. You don't always have to use a cell value in your formulas. You can use actual numbers. Want to raise a number to a power? That's easy. Let's say you want 6 squared, so equals A4 raised to the second power. Now notice I typed in a lowercase a there. That's fine. Excel does not care if you type in capital or lowercase letters for your cell references. A4 to the second power, 36. 6 times 6. Okay, so we're done with this temporary data. I want to delete the whole column. Now, I could just select all of this data and press delete. Or, I can wipe out all of the information in the column at once by simply clicking up here on the column header, the actual letter A, and that will select the entire column. Now I can press delete on the keyboard. That's how you clear the contents or erase an entire column. Technically, it's called clearing a range of cells.